Hey coach, so excited that you found our YouTube channel and found everything that we have to offer on teachhoops.com. Um, if you have any questions, go click down below. Um, we're here to help, we're here to serve. So go over and check it out up above. Welcome to Coach Unplugged. Um, so Coach Wilson, I, I want you, you so you, you might, I think you're the first doctor we've had on, PhD. Hey. <laughs> so I want you to describe your basketball journey is probably as unique as anybody, you know, that we've had on the podcast. So I would love for you to kind of go through your, your journey as a coach and then, you know, how you ended up where you are right now, where you're kind of helping other coaches become better coaches. Sure. Uh, well, I was a, a very average player. Uh, <laughs> with a big heart and I ended up walking on at North Carolina Wilmington for a wonderful head coach, uh, Jerry Wainwright. And it was just a transformative experience and started coaching in the community in a local inner city program and got the coaching bug. Um, coached in high school in North Carolina for a couple of years and then was a graduate assistant at the University of Tennessee for three years. Uh, fortunate enough to win SEC championship, a couple tournaments, uh, Sweet 16. Uh, then uh, partially throughout my wife's career, got out of college coaching, wanted to give her an opportunity to be in a major city. So uh, coached in Atlanta for five years and then outside of Athens, Georgia, for five years as a high school head varsity boys coach. And I was outside of uh, Athens, Georgia, which is a, a lovely place where the University of Georgia has had a, a great – uh, great job, really enjoyed it. Just thought I was being called in a different direction. And I wasn't sure what that was. Uh, investigated a lot of things. And then the opportunity came to go back to the University of Tennessee to pursue my PhD. Um, and so we, we did that, sold our house, sold my truck, sold everything we owned, had an infant daughter. I wasn't sure exactly where it was going to end up. I uh, thought I was going to be teaching sport management. But uh, a position opened at Georgia Southern University in their uh, coaching education department, which was the second nationally accredited program in the country. It was one of only two in the country to be nationally accredited at the undergraduate and graduate level, have a fully online master's program in kinesiology with emphasis in coaching education. It's a really amazing, strong program. And, and helping coaches is my passion. Uh, that's what I wanted to do. That's what my dissertation was about. Uh, and I started my first coaching newsletter in 1996. You know, started a, a company in 2007 helping coaches. And so then this opportunity to come to Georgia Southern, where I've been there five years. I'm now an associate professor of coaching education at Georgia Southern and uh, continued coaching on the side while I was here for four years. Moved over to the girls' side, fortunate enough to win a state championship, uh, coaching girls down here, and uh, now focusing completely on just investing in the next generation of coaches. So, coaches, so explain explain what that program yeah. consists of. Can, I mean, so, so very intriguing. It's probably past my, I'm probably past my prime to, to join. But this would, 20 years ago, this would have intrigued me. So explain to me what the program is, who it applies to, what it, what, what is it, what does it give to the coach? You know, I know like when I did sure. my master's and stuff and the things I was looking at to become, you know, a better teacher, a better, all that kind of stuff. Right. Well, my master's degree is in sport management. If, if there had been a coach that I was aware of, I, I would have certainly done that. I, I mean, right. it's, I, obviously I'm biased, but I'm really impressed by our program. All of the instructors are full-time professors who are coaches or were coaches. And we have everybody, because it's fully online, we have people from all over the country. We have right. Division One head coaches, NAIA head coaches, high school coaches, high school coaches, every sport. And that's one of the neatest things is being able to learn from the coaches in other sports. Like uh, I mean, we've had martial arts instructors, uh, equestrian coaches, and then every other sport you can imagine. Um, but we, we take you through uh, – there are eight domains and 40 in America, which I wasn't even aware of when I, for the first 18 years I coached. Right. Uh, the national – for, for sports coaches but if i had known i would have been a better coach faster right so our program passed on those and so uh we we, we cover all of those and give you everything to be a, a better coach faster uh, we've had tremendous feet uh we don't really advertise uh, unlike some of the programs that have popped up it's all word of mouth our cohorts are we have two cohorts that we admit in april every year that are always packed with high quality people i mean i just absolutely love it because we have people that are passionate about coaching so right. it, it's just phenomenal. 
It's, it's, uh, I always tell my students, it's like, it's, and I'm a math teacher. I said, find, find the, something you love to do, something that loves you back and something that pays well. And if you find those three things, life will be good. You know, most Jackpot, people have a hard right? time finding that intersection of those three circles, but if you sure. can, yeah. Um, but I know there's a lot of coaches that, that listen to this, that love, love coaching. So how long does it take to do the different programs? So the master's degree is 14 months. So you start one summer and you're done at the end of the next summer. So it's, okay. it's, you know, it's packed in. You take two classes a term, um, you know, so we cover everything, you know, it, it prepares you. If you want to get your, you know, CSCS, uh, if you're into strength and conditioning, you're prepared. You could go ahead and, and sit for that exam. Practice analysis. We talked about right. uh, skill analysis. We talk about uh, sociology. I mean, everything is a holistic look at coaching and everything that goes into it and the discourse analysis of how coaches are portrayed in the media and how that impacts the way you coach your team, even subconsciously. We look at your past experiences, you know, and so it's um, it's a cohort model. So you come in with a group, you get close with a group of about 30 other coaches, and uh, they always learn a lot from each other, from interactions with each other. And so it's it's a really high-quality um Thing. If people are looking into it, we have – it's amazing. I mean, it amazes me sometimes. I mean, we'll have people that have coached for 30 years that just right. want to be a better coach. Right. That come, and then we have people that are doing it because they're trying to get a pay raise. Uh, right. They're teachers. We have people that are that are assistant college coaches and feel like they need to get a master's to help them uh, be competitive to, to get a, a head job. We have people that are small college. A lot of times, as you know, in small college, you're going to have to teach a course or something right. in addition to your <laughs> yeah. coaching duties. Right. right. So this qualifies you for that because of accreditation issues. You have a degree higher than what you're teaching. So if you're going to teach undergrads, you need to have a master's degree. So there's a lot of different reasons people do it. Um, but I've been uh, learning from all the students. Right. And it, yeah. So, so, um, okay. So does it, does it go through like coaching philosophy? Does it go through interacting with students? I mean, what, what would be something that you could unpack for our listeners that you think is, valuable not only from from obviously your program but as being a coach either a youth coach or a high school coach or a college coach what are some what are some what are some tools you think you could help the people that are listening to this or me to be well, honest sure. i mean uh, i mean obviously the buzzword nowadays is culture right everybody right. talks about the culture and there was a thing going around the internet where somebody had sliced together every introductory press conference you know, and, and according to the introductory press conference, everybody's going to play fast and play exciting and everybody's going to have a great culture. Well, culture is who you are, right? You can't change your culture unless you have a philosophy. The philosophy is who you want to be. So we, we take a hard look at your philosophy. We look at your influences, uh, you know, who influenced you. It could be somebody you played for or taught you. It could be somebody, uh, you know, you see on, on television, a professional coach or college coach you admire. Uh, it could be somebody, a fictional coach in the movies or whatever. We look at all those influences. We, like I said before, we look at the discourse analysis of how coaches are portrayed in the media. And, and we look in, so into our personal experience. And then we have the second level is what I call a personal research. So all good coaches are always trying to learn from their peers. You know, are you going to other practices? Are you going to, you know, other workouts? Are you going to college practice or whatever it might be? So are you reading books? Are you on podcasts like this? Right. You know, what are you doing to try and get better? And then what I didn't get to do when I was coaching, because you're so focused on your team. And if you're a teacher on your teaching and your family and all these other things, the third level is peer reviewed research. And so this is where people now like me, professors go and they study something and that, that research has to be approved by institutional review board it's sent out to other experts that say, yes, this makes sense. This is done well. It's good stuff. And then it, it, it gets published. So uh, somebody asked me today, like, what are you reading? Well, I, I get to read all day, every day about coaching. I mean, it's the greatest thing ever. And, and it right. might be from anywhere around the world, but it, it zeroes in on a specific topic. And so what I try to do now is, like, the people that are in our master's program, they don't have time to go read all the latest journals right. in sports <laughs> psychology and, and the biomechanics. And all so I right. try and, you know, dig through that for them. Because of my experience with over 20 years coaching boys and girls, high school, college, middle school, you know, inner city, rural, I've been in just about every setting you can think of. And what applies, what helps you connect with today's athletes, with today's parents, with today's administrators to be more effective 
And so that's really what we focus on. And certainly it always, in fact, and that's the undergraduate level, I teach a bunch of undergraduate courses. And no matter what course I'm teaching, whether I'm teaching, uh, I have a course called Coaching Olympic Sports, whether I'm teaching our coaching basketball, whether I'm teaching strength and conditioning course, we always start with philosophy, number one. Because okay. nothing else matters if your philosophy is not right. right. And when I was a young coach, I wasn't sure, you know. It was about yeah, the so perfect out of bounds sure. play. I swear to God, it's not, <laughs> you know, it's like there's not a out of bounds play that you're going to ever learn that's going to help you win more than like culture and philosophy and all those things. Um, well, I, I remember hearing you at the clinic in, 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 in Georgia and you talked about, and, I'm, and I've tried to, I, I haven't gone back and watched it, but it's like you close your eyes and you think about the person that was most influential. Can you unpack that again? Do you remember that? Well, it's kind of like we were just saying, you know, I usually will ask coaches, you know, can you think of a coach who had a positive impact on you? Right, right? I and can. It's usually, yeah. And it's usually the thing that doesn't come to mind is like you said, that out of bounds play. You know, I tell a story. I had a young man play for me named Jacob Hollis, and we had three teams. We had a ninth grade team, a JV and a varsity. This kid wanted to make the team so bad, and he comes in, and I did always the cuts face to face. You know, right. Even when I had 150 kids try out for my team one year when I was at a large high school, 3,500 kids, I had 150 tryouts, you know, so every cut's face to face. So I'm face to face with this kid and I get to tell him he makes the team. He's so nervous, his legs bouncing, you know, and he cries tears of joy. He's so happy he's made the ninth grade team. Right. You know, I wasn't the best player, but his heart and soul was into it. And wake up to me the next year. Uh, right before tryouts, he sits down and his legs bouncing again. He's nervous. And he says, Coach, I just I feel like uh, I'm going to have to give up basketball. Uh, I feel like I'm being called to try and grow our Fellowship of Christian Athletes chapter here at the school. I was just blown away by a 10th grader, you know, doing this. Well, a couple months later, it turns out uh, he's got a tumor on his spine. They removed the tumor. He, he, he can't walk. He's in a wheelchair. He's going through chemo. He's all still off. I go to visit him at the Ronald McDonald house, you know, and he's like, Coach, no, you sit down, and I'm going to get you your meal. I'm going to go through the line. I'm like, no, no, Jacob. You know, he's like, Coach, sit down. I got you. And he says, you know, I just wish I could run some more sprints. You know, how many times are our players you know, complain about conditioning? Right. He's wishing he could do it one more time. You know, he came in and out of cancer remission, comes out. Sadly, tragically, he ends up passing away. While I, this is a couple of years after I've left North Oconee, uh, the high school outside of Athens, Georgia, got my PhD. I'm now at Georgia Southern teaching. I go back to the funeral about three or four hours back uh, to the Athens area and go through the receiving line. His mother's there and his mother uh, grabs me and she's not a big one. And she grabs me and is, is just shaking me. And she's going, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for how you treated my child. And she didn't say, thanks for that press offense. You right. know, thanks for that out-of-bounds play. Thanks for that defense. That is the most important thing. And any coach that's been in any length of time knows that. We get so caught up in the minutia of the latest. The Warriors ran this, and, you know, and the Raptors right. did right. that. But that's not what's most important. And that's not what they're going to remember. You know, you've been doing this long enough. When you hear from people you coached 20 years ago, that's not what they talk about. X and no. O's. <laughs> no. No, I've guys playing in the NBA and they talk about bus rides. They don't talk about like, you know, they talk about like, remember that one time in the locker room? It's like, really? That's what you remember that season? Yeah, you know, <laughs> and it, because that's, that was impressionable to them. It was like, it, it, it's sometimes that one, I had a kid come back from like six or seven years ago and it was one conversation in my room for five minutes about life things. And that's what impressed, I saw him every day for four years. It's like, it's that, it's right. that impression that you can make. Um, what do you think the hardest thing to teach is, like as a coach? The hardest thing to teach? Well, uh, probably uh, competitiveness. <laughs> you right. know, I had a, an argument with a assistant coach, uh, last place I was a head coach, and she said, well, they either have it or they don't. And I don't accept that because they ha they have a certain level of it, but it's our right. job to raise it whatever it is. Right. To design practices to build competitiveness. They might not be as competitive as you want them, but by golly, you could make them more competitive. Right. Okay? Yeah, you can put something on it, but I mean, that's the thing. I mean, you can't push a rope, but um, you know, that they've got to have some fire in their belly naturally, but you can build an environment that increases that. 
That's true. I never thought of that, that, that. Yeah. Um, is there one thing like when, when you were coaching or that you've learned over the things that we could like that either a, a success or a failure or something that we could unpack that would help the coaches listening? Well, I, I, you know, I think the biggest thing is the intentionality, you know, like of, of building relationships with how your entire program is designed. I mean, if I asked you right now, if I went to your players, one of your listeners' players, and said, tell me what coach is about, could they tell me your core values? Could they tell me your philosophy on offense and defense? Because right. And it's not how much we know as a coach, and it's not how much we can transfer to our players. It's what they do under pressure. Right? And as the SEALs say, you think to the level of your training. So what are you going to do when you're under pressure? And that only happens to in an intentional alignment of what your outcome is. You know, and, and all of your listeners and, and you know as a teacher, and I've been fortunate enough to design enough courses at the college level that you start with your outcome. What is your intended right. outcome? Right? And from your outcome, you work backwards and say, how am I going to assess this? Right? And then how am I going to achieve it? What activities am I going to do right, to master this, to reach that outcome? And so if you plan your practices, and that's what I got so much better at, and that's what I, I wish I'd known, instead of doing, hey, you know what, I really liked this drill when I was a player. Or my coach, or I, or I went to this clinic, you know, and this championship <laughs> coach had this drill. Right. So therefore, I'm going to do that drill. Versus here's what we believe in, right? I know it, you know it, we reinforce it every day. We're going to do these drills to reinforce that. We're going to measure it. And, and the point is not exactly what drills you do, but for example, I, I stole a shooting drill from Joe Champy, who was a Hall of Fame women's coach at Auburn. Right? And I, I saw the shooting drill. And, and so I took it and I adapted it, and, and we did this shooting drill. And the players knew it. The parents knew it. And it was we called it to get the green light. If you wanted the green light to shoot, here was the drill. Here's the standard you have to meet. So now I'm not the bad guy saying, well, Johnny can't shoot. Here's the standard. I want all of you to hit it. And, I'm, and even my last team, I mean, I had a parent come up to me and say, you know, that his daughter, I said, well, how are things going? He said, well, she's working really hard to be a green light shooter. So now it's transparent. It's out there. You know, it's, it's not on bias against your kid. And we're aligned. Our drills you know, are aligned to that. They know we're going to test it. They know they're going to be rewarded. It's clear and it's game-like. And, you know, we had, had a that, – for that team, skill development was a premium. Right. I don't know what – that's not a premium, but so, for this team especially, we, we couldn't throw it in the ocean. Right. <laughs> so, so we've all had those. So, so yeah. let's talk about let's, – let's talk about that because people are always asking me about practices and practice drills and stuff. So let's, let's unpack that a little bit and talk about sure. how you would – I think you referred to it as backward design. How would you, right. how would you backward design practice slash practice drills? Well, I think the first thing you do is, you know, what's a realistic goal for your program and where do you want to be at the end of the season? You know, if it's a, a realistic goal that, you know, you're a state championship contender, okay, well, what are you going to have to do to win the state championship? What team are you going to have to beat? What style of play are you going to have to handle, right? And so you plan backwards from there. You, you don't – you want to be a visionary coach, not a reactionary coach. So we, we have a game, we get killed on the board. So, all right, crap. Well, tomorrow we're going to work on boxing out for 40 minutes. Right. Right. Then the next game, you turn it over. You go, All right, we're gonna we're gonna run this drill, and every time we turn it over, we're gonna run. Right? And so you're just reacting to what's going on. Versus, you know, I had a list of skills. We had three emphasis for every practice. We had an offensive emphasis, a defensive emphasis, and a rebounding emphasis. Right. And it was the same for a week because with with kids, you talk about pedagogy and teaching children. The repetition is really important, especially the younger they are. Right. But it was the same thing for a week. And why, why, th why three and why those three? Well, I, I think to me, it's like, you know, offense, defense, and special teams. You know, in basketball, some people want to put in transition in there. But to me, uh, this is talking about the high school level. Offensively, you know, you got to score to win. You play great defense, you might tie, but you got to right. score to win. Okay. Right? And then defensively, I mean, obviously, you have to defend. Championship level teams have to defend. They have to be able to get stops. And then rebounding is such an undertaught thing. And some people say you can't teach it. It's something that's in you or not. But, again, I don't agree with that. You, right. There's a level that you can take them higher, but it's got to be an emphasis, I think. And, you know, more the Bobby Knight said, you get what you emphasize. And you get right. What you tolerate. And so uh, my college coach, Jerry Wainwright, used to say, every drill is a rebounding drill. We didn't do rebounding drills where, hey, we're going to box out. 
It's right. every drill is a rebounding drill. We're shooting free throws before water, you know, and your partner's shooting, you're stepping in, you're boxing out, you're getting the ball, you're chinning it, you're pivoting, you're making a pass. The ball better not hit the floor. If it hits the floor, it's going to hit once. You know? It's every drill is a rebounding drill, but especially at the high school level where they might not be aware of the, all the techniques. You know, so you know, our, uh, our emphasis one week in rebounding might be get even. And so by get even means I'm behind somebody. Uh, they're trying to box me out. I've I got to at least get even with them. I can swim, move, use my elbow to try and at least get in, even with them, or I can spin off them. But I've got to at least get even. I do not accept being boxed out ever. I got boxed out is not an excuse. Right? Right. So that's something for a week we're going to talk about that. And then it's in the locker room and we add to it every week so they can see. So by the, you know, the end of the year, you've gone through 20 weeks or whatever it is, you've built on these gradually a progression where it's clear and you, you've got to. So it's by the end of the season. And I learned a lot of this. I worked for a tremendous coach named Paul Webb. And, you know, I was a assistant coach for him because after I came down to Georgia Southern, here I am, a professor of coaching education. And just because you got the coaching bug, can't get rid of, rid of it. I'm going to help him out. In the first practice, like, there's this drill going on, and this team's really good. We, we ended up winning the state championship, you know, back-to-back. But, I mean, there was 30 things wrong in this drill. Like, it's driving me crazy. I'm, and so I walk over, and you know, I have my hand in my mouth. I'm like, Coach, are you, are you seeing them? all the mistakes we're making and he said yeah it's okay we're going to fix one today right? you can't fix 30 things at once it's like my right. golf swing i went took a golf lesson one time right and I, I made the golf pro cry because i was had 30 things wrong with my swing you can't fix 30 things at once and so if you have a plan a visionary proactive plan or by the end of the season because basketball is a postseason sport we're playing our best and we've built on all these things now you can go back to those touchstones. So now we're in the huddle. We're getting killed on the boards or something. I can go back to, hey, Johnny, all you got to do is get even right there. Okay? Well, we've done it all over the years. You know what I'm mean? Or Or ask them the question, hey, what can you do to get more rebounds? And you get them talking. You get them using that same terminology. You have a common language that's being reinforced all year. And then they're coaching themselves. That's the other biggest thing is you've got to create a culture where your players are accountable right, to coach each other. Right. Uh, you're all assistant coach slash players. Uh, right. So if the freshman screwing up, I'm not mad at the freshman. I'm mad at the senior that let the freshman screw up. Right. <laughs> and I love I, – is there any reason behind threes? Because I'm a big – I do a lot of things in threes too. I, I think it's easier for them to remember. Anything more than that, they have a hard time. But is there any – is there any science behind groups of three? Well, there, there is. I mean, you know, three, three to eight, they say – Okay. Uh, where you're going to keep in short term memory. It's just like your phone numbers. Right? That's why they came up with the digits uh, the way they did because it's easy to remember. But I agree completely. Three, it's the same way when you talk about core values, you know, and, and I see some people and they've got 20 core values. Right. <laughs> okay, well, that's fantastic, right? I mean, really, there's 100 things you probably should do, but can your players recite those 100 to those 20? Right. You know, so, right, I agree with you. So I think three is easy to remember, it's easy to reinforce. It's easy to align what you're doing to. And I, and, I, and I do a couple things at the end of practice that I find successful where I'll ask them, you know, because we're talking about them in part of practice, so I'll ask them. But then I'll, I'll also grab another kid and have them. It's interesting. I'll have them say, you know, something someone else on the team did well and something that they did well and something that we did well. And it's like, and it's, yeah. again, it's a group of three. <laughs> um, right. But it's just, you know, it's, it's making them process because, you know, they all process a little different. Um, right. Yeah, I, I love that. I love that idea of I, – I love the idea of backward design. Um, I think I've always kind of done that, um, but I didn't have a word for it, and I didn't have a way of describing it. Like, you know, why am I right. doing – I always – it's always the why for me. Like, why am I doing that drill? <laughs> um, sure. You know, and then the backward design goes, well, I'm doing that drill to do this and this and this. And if I don't have the why, then I don't do the drill. Um, right. But, you know, there's kind of a, I think I've been doing it. I just didn't know what I was calling it. Um, so is there, um, you're, you're talking about reading and, and, and things like that. Are there any favorite books or things? I know you have one that you wrote a little bit on, but are there any favorite books that you would have coaches look at or read or things like that? 
Well, if you want to go back to you know just the philosophy piece, the two best books that I, I've seen on that are The 3D Coach by Jeff Duke. Okay. And then um, Joe Ehrman's you know, Inside Out Coaching. Okay. And they have a whole thing called in, the Inside Out Initiative now, and, and both of those are fantastic. Uh, and it really gets to, um, you know, the heart of coaching and what it is really connecting because that's what it's about, especially with today's athletes. I don't care where you are, you know, where you're from, what background, kids want to know they're cared for. And there's different ways to do that, but how can you do that? Uh, like you said, um, if you're having the kids reinforce with each other, I think that's huge because they don't communicate verbally, right? They text <laughs> each other, like they snap at each other, right? But yeah. I think that's, I, I would even, we would have a, a team notebook and we would do it in writing. So everybody had their team notebook. We come to our post practice huddle and not every practice and just occasionally during the year and we might do it in the locker room, but we call it a positive pass. Right? Everybody pass your notebook to the left, write something positive about right. your teammates in there. Now they've got it, they've got it in writing. They can go back to. Oh, I love that. Uh, I love that idea. Yeah. I, 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 I tell a story with my guys. I go, you guys have it so easy. Like, I used to have to call a girl up and it would like, I'd make a fun and, I, and it would be a phone and then I might not get her. And they go, what do you mean? I might like, I might get mom or dad. So I got to talk to them before I can give, even get to her. And then I'm not talking in my room. There was no phone in my room. I'm in like in the kitchen and they're like, what? Right. I go, you have no idea. We're not like Snapchatting. You want to go have lunch? It's like, what are you talking about? Like, right. well, but we were forced to do that, you know, or you didn't do it, you know? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love that idea of like a teammate to the left, teammate to the right kind of positive. You're right. And then as soon as they write it down, it becomes real too. How, what's your feel? Do you, I mean, that's, I've done some reading on, on, ta- on note taking too, that it's actually better to write the notes than to type them. Have you read some of that? Oh, absolutely. There's no question. And yeah. I mean, yeah. note taking in class, that's absolutely. I mean, my, my college students, you know, they, they look at me like I'm nuts when I try and tell them to, you know, close your laptop, write this down. Right. You know, it blows me away when you tell them, hey, get out of sheet of paper. They're like, what? For what? Yeah. You know, yeah. Start, start yeah no, there's, I, I, I know there's places that don't even let them bring the laptops in. It's like, no, you have to write this because there's a process that goes on. Um, tell me about your favorite quote. I mean, for me, I, I mean, I'm a, a person of faith that has a huge impact in my life since so. Uh, you know, just Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, for me, is the one, just trust in the Lord with all your heart, you know, uh, with all your, you know, everything you have, you know, and all your ways, submit to him, and he'll make your path straight. Every time I've tried to figure things out myself, it hasn't worked out well. Right. You know, I've tried to, and it's like my position now. I mean, I'm in the perfect job. I mean, I love coaching. I love coaches. I mean, it blows my mind. And the other thing about moving to higher education is, you don't know where you're going to live. You don't know where you're going to work. There's just right. not many jobs. Right. So here I was, I left Georgia. I've been in Georgia for 10 years. I got back to Tennessee to get my doctorate. I don't know where in America I'm going to be. Right. I it's like, it's like being Georgia. a college coach. You might end up in right. Poughkeepsie, New York. You don't know where you're going to end up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I come back, I, a position that opens up here, you know, in Georgia where I'm already vested in the retirement system where as to get a job as a professor, you have to come teach a class at most places as far as the interview. I have to come teach a class. I got one of my former players in the class I'm teaching. You know, I right. had three former players that had, had come here, you know, just because I tried to be a, you know, submit to God. And, you know, I had no idea where I was going to end up when I sold my house and everything I owned and went to, you know, get my PhD. But here I am now. And, and this, I mean, I have the best job. I love our students at the undergrad level, the graduate level. And then, you know, the craziest thing is I've gotten involved with USA basketball. Right. Where, you know, they saw me speak at a, you have to go to these conferences and I kind of had a bad attitude. My second daughter had just been born. I was kind of missing her. I didn't really want to do this presentation, but all right, suck it up. Here we go. You're on. Turns out there were two people from USA basketball in the crowd. Right. Uh, that's the one they're designing their curriculum. They're getting ready to start their coaching academy. I saw their shirts. I went up to them afterwards and said, Hey, you know, if there's ever anything I can do, let me know. Thinking they just pat me on the head, send me on my way. Right. Right. They're like, wow, you know, we loved your presentation. Would you be interested in talking with us? And so now I've been able to speak, you know, nine times to their national coaching academies. I was able to go to the senior national team training camp before Rio, the junior national team training camp, and help them design the coach licensure program and all these things. And it's crazy. And I, I mean, 
I'm a walk on, right? I'm, I'm a walk-on. <laughs> and those academies, walk-on. those academies are great. It, I, I mean, I, I, to be honest with you, it should have happened 20 years ago. <laughs> We're a little behind the eight ball with that. Um, right. I'm so glad that, you know, Showalter and, and, and USA basketball and they finally, I mean, we're trying, we're look, the funny part is we're trying to catch up to Europe, to be honest with you, with just kind of all this stuff. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm so, so happy that that's, that's moving in the right direction, but it's funny. You're right. It, you go into, you go into higher education. You, it, it's like being a college coach. You're just, who knows where you're going to end up. Um, talk about the book that you had, uh, that you wrote something in, what was that called? The, uh, um, co- co- uh, coach education essentials. Right. Uh, human kinetics is a big publisher and anything to do with sports. And, uh, it's a, it's a really important book that's coming out in the coach education, coach development world internationally. Coach development is the term they use more. Uh, right. Education kind of implies an end. Like I graduated sober, whereas development is ongoing. Right. But it's a book designed to, have to help your coach development, whether you're an undergraduate student or ongoing, or you're like me, a professor. And so it's some of the best people in the world. And like you mentioned, uh, in the rest of the developed world, coaching is looked at very differently. I, I, there are detailed systems in place, you know, where you can go to college to be a coach, and there's a career path for you where you're trained right. to be a coach, where that's not the case in most sports in America. And so uh, I'm. I was really happy to be asked to write a chapter in it on holistic athlete-centered coaching, which is kind of fancy words. It just means caring about your kids, right? right? And they're a whole person. They're a whole person. You have to coach the whole person. You have to coach the spiritual person. You have to sp- coach the emotional part, the social. It's not just the physical. It's kind of a 3D book I mentioned earlier. It talks about it breaks it into three. Um, but if you look at holistic, we can break it down even more. So that's what my chapter is about. It's coming out in June. Um, and we'll put, this, we'll put all this, we'll put up we'll, the books you mentioned in this book, we'll put down the show notes of so people that are listening, but especially for young coaches, this is from a porch dog and an old coach. <laughs> um, you know, you have to ask the why and every kid has a different journey. You know, it's like I, something happened with my team and this, you know, I don't know if we were checking in into a hotel and the person was a little short and she was having a bad day. So I, and I pulled some of the guy, I go, you don't know her story. You don't know what just happened. Maybe her car broke down on the way to work. Maybe she's right. worried about paying her cable. You don't know her story. Unless you talk to her, you don't. So give the person, right. have some empathy. And it's like this, it's the same way where you work with your players. You know, you don't, you don't know why they're having a bad practice. They might have failed their algebra test and they're worried about what's going to happen at home or they're just feeling disappointed about it or they're had an argument with a girl. You don't know. So you, unless you're willing to dive into that story, <laughs> and find out their story, then, you know, you gotta, you gotta spend the time to find it out. And the, the fun part about coaching is once you figure out their why and their story, coaching is easy. I'm telling you, and for everyone that's listening, the, the X and O stuff's easy. Once you figure out the why, you know, that thing. Well, once they know you care about that, they'll do yeah. whatever you say because yeah. you care about them. Yeah. They'll run through a wall is what I say. It's like, they, right. they, you got them at that point. They'll say, run through that wall and they'll go, okay, okay because they know you love them and you've spent the time to, to, to build that relationship. And then the X and O stuff, you're going to still win and lose. And, you know, you still have to have things ready, but the battle is so much, I think Steve Kerr, I think there's NBA coaches that you can see that they've just built relationships with these guys that are making mooka box, you know, and they got all these entourage and people, but they're still building relationships. <laughs> um, with those NBA guys, you know, because, you know, they're even at a different level. But so any parting words, coach, for young coaches, people that are thinking, getting into coaching, all that stuff? You know, just uh, Kevin Eastman says, be a, a learn it all, not a know it all, right? So <laughs> podcasts like this one, uh, you know, just don't assume um, that if somebody's a middle school coach, you can't learn from them or somebody's right. a women's coach or a men's coach, or they're from a different part of the country, you can learn something from everyone. It right. might be what not to do, or it might be what <laughs> to do, but you have to be open, right? And you have to have your antenna up. You have to be willing to accept it. Now, I have students, even at the undergraduate level, they're in my class as an undergraduate, 19 years old, and have literally written, you know, like, you can't tell me how to coach. Right. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I, I can't, but I can show you some things that didn't work. You know, I can tell you more about what not to do than what to do. Right. 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 And it's about being a lifetime right. learner. It's about being a lifetime learner. If you're not going to be a lifetime learner, then I mean, I'm, I've been in this thing 30 years. I'm, if I was doing exactly what I was doing 30 years ago, I probably wouldn't be coaching. 
right. because I've had to change. I mean, you have to change with the kids. You have to change with the things that are going on in the court, all of those things. So, um, well, I really appreciate you taking your time out um, to do this and to help coaches that are listening and to, um, and I will put the, sh- I'll put the show notes. I'll, I'll even get the link, um, for your program. I think it's great. Like I said, it's like, shoot, maybe, maybe that'll be my, that'll be my second masters. I'll have to see if I can figure out some time. Come on. That. <laughs> All Let's right. I'll you. see what I can do. Thanks coach. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate yep, it so much. Yep. Bye-bye. Hey, Coach, so glad you enjoyed the video. Let me know how we can help. Join ttroops.com up above. Um, I've been through it all. I've won championships, won a bunch of rings. Let me know how I can help you become a better basketball coach. Click ttroops.com and check it out.